Hey guys, Furum here, and today I am going to be testing the Mercedes AMG C63 Coupe Touring Car 2014 in multiplayer. I seem to like testing cars with long names for some reason, so my rank is 1678, and I have a tuning of 0505 and 5355 in Pro Kits. Almost its maximum speed, but not quite, because that would get it very close to rank 1700, and I don't want to go that high. So this car has above average acceleration, better than the Homage and Sin R1, and about akin to a Vulcan, maybe even slightly faster than that. It drifts extremely well, almost like a Vulcan 2 or an Aranera Hesera GT or something like that. It actually reminds me in a lot of ways of driving the Vulcan, except for the fact that it is a good bit slower by around, I want to say, 15 miles per hour, which is actually quite a lot, but as you will see in this video, sometimes you can still pull out some pretty good wins against some faster cars because of just how fast its acceleration is and how good its drifting and handling are. So the car directly behind me right now is a BMW Homage, which is around, I want to say, 20 miles per hour faster or so than me at this rank. But it definitely cannot take the corners as well. So I believe this car might have a slight negative speed modifier of like 98 or 99 percent. So it may be going just a couple miles per hour slower than what it shows on screen. This speed, while not being the greatest for this rank, certainly is decent and will allow you to beat pretty much all the cars but the overpowered ones. They will beat you a lot of the time just because, well, they're faster, and speed is the most important thing in multiplayer. And drifting is also very important because that homage just fell off into the ditch. So coming up here, something happens that has happened to me fairly often recently and is kind of annoying after I updated. My game just freezes for a second, and in multiplayer, well, you can't just pause the race or anything anything like that, the other cars are still going. So basically your car just sits still on the track while everyone else starts catching up. So yeah, it's kind of annoying, and it usually only happens like once every, I don't know, 15 minutes or whatever, but it's really annoying in a situation where you're in a multiplayer race and you lose because of it. The car catching up behind me right now is not the homage again, but is a Sin R1, which is around, I want to say, 12 miles per hour faster than me at this rank. So that is why he is catching up fairly quickly, but not quickly enough, and I managed to beat him as well as a homage on two laps on Avalanche Alley. The Sin R1 was ranked 1687, and the homage 1692. And by the way, these races were from the previous season, so that is why my rating is so high. I did not make it that quickly to 2400 in the current season, although I have already made it to 2200. So as you can see here, I start up quicker than that homage and maybe just a little bit faster than the Sin R1. Now when I say this car's drifting is good, I don't mean super extremely sharp, because while that may mean good drifting in some people's eyes, it can be kind of annoying. This car's drifting is good in the fact that it is not super sharp, but it is not super wide either. Just like, say, the Aranera Hesera or something like that when multiplayer tuned. The Vulcan is a little bit on the sharp side, even if you have zero on handling. Now, it can be sharp around corners like that one because I believe that corner is artificially enhanced, as well as some of the other ones on Nevada and on some tracks like Tenerife, for example, that has that really sharp corner. I don't think the Azure Coast ones do it. As you can see, this first one I don't take as sharply as this second one here. There wasn't too much of a noticeable difference there, but in some cars, there is a quite large difference. So in this race, we came in second to a Sin R1. He was able to take the tunnel on the inside at the beginning, and that gave him a big advantage. Plus, the Sin R1 is just a faster car. But we did beat a 1680 Homage, which is, I believe, Dr. Hallusion's tune, and it is probably one of the best, if not the best, Homage tunes if you don't want to max pro it. It is 5523 and 5555. So here you can see I do, in fact, start up quicker than the Sin R1, but because his speed is faster, he then manages to pass me. That is what tends to happen in a lot of races where you have a car that accelerates faster, but other cars have faster speed. You tend to get ahead at the beginning, and then they get ahead, then you get ahead around the turns, and then they get ahead again. It just kind of keeps on going back and forth for a lot of the races. So you may have noticed that I have not uploaded a video for the past few days. This is because I am simultaneously doing the M2 Special Edition World Tour as well as the Audi R8 e-tron Special Edition R&D. And I just want to be able to put as much time into those as I can. 
but I have won the BMW M2 this morning at a fairly low rank of 1135, I believe it is. It is at a tuning of 0400 This is as low as I could win the second to last AI on Tokyo. So you may be thinking, why did you try to win it so low? It is best around 1262 rank, which, by the way, I will be trying. Well, I wanted to try it lower at first because, frankly, not a lot of people have done that, and I'm sure a lot of you guys want to know how it performs at lower ranks. Well, I'll give you a little hint. It is a lot better than pretty much every other car in the game at that rank, except for the Audi R8 e-tron and the SLK Special Edition, which are like 35 miles per hour faster than it at that rank. So, yes... I will see how many of those I run into whenever I test that in multiplayer, which hopefully will be very soon, and who knows, maybe we can pull out some wins. So I beat a 1674 Cinar 1 in this race. This is in fact the same one that beat us last time, so good rematch. Here we have a bit of an interesting race on Alps against an MP48, an MP425, and two homages. So here I knocked down one of them, but then I did not take the turn well, and so I lost a bunch of speed, and the homages managed to get ahead of me. But here, this homage lost some speed, and so I managed to catch up to him and pass him. I'm not exactly sure what happened to him. Now I'd like to let you guys know my thoughts on the R8 e-tron special edition R&D. I have managed to finish lab three, so I finished the first three labs, and I have just the fourth one left to go. I personally find it to be a fairly easy R&D so far. This could be because I am upgraded quite a bit, but it is also due to the fact that you really do not have to get a whole lot of quality checks per race. Most of them require only one or two, and I've only had one so far, even in Lab 3 that required three tries doing it to finish it. So this is what I believe is happening with the event. The event itself is easy. However, Gameloft has put two barriers in the way that will make it harder for people to get the car. Number one, it has token upgrades. However, this can be negated if you use your four free R&D upgrades very carefully. And number two, Gameloft has introduced a new engine for the car, the legendary electric engine, and the R&D does not actually give you enough to be able to win the car. So you either have to buy the professional kit box for like 1,600 tokens, or wait for legendary electric engines to show up in exclusive deals, which by the way I have bought two of for 300,000 credits. It's very worth it knowing how rare those engines are. So in this race we got beat by an MP425 in homage, but we did beat another homage and an MP48. This next race was a very intense battle between me and three Vulcans. And we were the only cars in the race. So as you can see, I start up about the same speed as them, maybe even slightly faster because I'm able to get ahead of them all at the beginning. Which is interesting because I have zero acceleration upgrades, and most Vulcans around this rank probably have at least some. My Vulcan, for example, has maxed acceleration. Some people may wonder why I do that, but at this rank it is extremely important because the cars that do upgrade acceleration will often knock you down at the beginning if you don't, and thus, in my 1679 Vulcan, I have not once gotten knocked down by another Vulcan, or an Aranera Hesera GT, or anything besides an F1 car. So I would say it was definitely a good idea to max acceleration on that car. So here we are in third place. All the three Vulcans go to the left, and I go to the right. Now, you will see that the right route is indeed faster for cars that have good drifting, such as this one, because while two of the Vulcans are are still ahead. The third one has fallen further behind and I am catching up to the one in second place. This is because even though he has a faster car, I took the faster route. It is very important to understand the best routes for different cars in multiplayer because while the majority of tracks do have just a single route that is fastest for any car, some tracks such as this one have different routes for different kinds of cars. Cars that have bad drifting go left, cars that have good drifting go right. That's usually what it comes down to at that place on this track. So while the first Vulcan has now gotten way ahead, I have caught up even closer to the Vulcan in second place, and the Vulcan in last place has gotten even further back. 
I'm not sure what happened here, but the Vulcan that is in first place wrecked. Possibly it was in between the rays. Maybe he couldn't decide which way to go and went in the middle. That happens to me more often than I would like to admit, and it probably happens to some of you guys as well. Here, I think the Vulcan that is in last place learned a bit and decided to follow me on the faster route. Not that it would help him in this case, but maybe it will help him in the future. So we are coming in third place in this race, just behind two Vulcan that were very close to one another, and we beat a 1672 Vulcan. I'd say that's a pretty good showing for a card that, well, practically no one ever uses in multiplayer. The C63 was given out as an R&D car. I can't really say given out because, well, you technically get the car for free at the end. You still have to put a whole lot into it. So it is really not correct to say that the R&D and Endura Double Downs and things like that give you the car for free. I won this card the second time its R&D came around because the first time it came around was during a time when... I I was not really participating in any of these events because they were new to Asphalt at the time, and I just wasn't prepared to put a whole bunch of time and effort into them. But now I am proud to say that I have managed to win every single new car added to the game since the Porsche 959. And I am free to play as well. I've never spent any money on the game. So hopefully this will give some of you guys a little bit of a confidence boost if you do not wish to spend any money on the game either and you still want to get all the new cars. You can do it. It may take a lot of time, effort, and resources, but you can do it. So we are coming up close to the end of the second lap now, and the Vulcan behind me, because he wrecked, was never able to catch up again, and he wrecked again, and so we managed to finish second. Ahead of him, and behind a Max Proed MP425, or just Proed, I should say. And I can tell this was this Vulcan's first leaving of a race today because he only lost two points. The second time you leave a race in one day, it deducts seven points, and the third time and beyond, it deducts ten points. So yeah, you can tell how good of a day a person has had by how many points he loses when he disconnects. This time, thankfully, I was able to make it onto the inside of the tunnel, and thus I am able to come out in the beginning in first position. Now, there were two homages in this race, and it is two laps on Nevada reverse. So how long do you guys think I will be able to hold them off? Well, we will see. So the route I just took is I believe the fastest route where you can fill up your double tanks on that bridge. It is best to go up the first ramp underneath to get on top of the bridge. That is what I have found. In other news, one of the other new cars that will be coming in the update, the Buick Riviera, is a competitor to the normal Cobra and the normal M2. It can reach around 245 miles per hour or so, around a rank of 1270. Now, before this update, that would be extremely good. But now, since we have the M2 Special Edition and Audi RD Tron going above 275 and 285 at that rank, as well as the SLK that can reach 320, it's just not as good as it would have been before the update. But I will, of course, be still trying to get it and, of course, be testing it out. Because my goal is to multiplayer tune and test in multiplayer every single new car that has added to Asphalt 8 that I can reasonably get. Now, the bike and drove double down, we'll have to see about that one. If the bike is really good, I'm going to go for it. But if it's not, I don't know, because of all the glitches and stuff, that might just be a token sink. So I would now like to give my general review about this car. It does have a lower speed at this rank, as you have seen throughout the video, than the overpowered cars at its rank. However, because of its good acceleration and drifting, it can beat them a lot of the time. Like this car behind me right now is a homage, and on both laps I was able to get ahead of him enough for an entire lap worth of catch up around these corners. And thus, even on a two-lap Nevada reverse race, I am able to beat him. So yes, if you have this car sitting in your garage, it might be worth multiplayer tuning just to give it a try, because it is definitely an obscure but decent multiplayer car. Thank you all for watching. Please like the video if you enjoyed, and consider subscribing for more Asphalt 8 content. And I will see you later. Goodbye. <laughs>